Good afternoon guys, welcome to another video. Friday the 21st today, 21st of January. Uh, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon now. Work is done for the day, so I've nipped over the road to this stretch of the Avon you can see behind me. My um, One of my neighbors owns the fishing rights to this. He lets me fish it, which is very kind of him. So yeah, I've come out on a very, very cold day. It's two degrees at the moment. It's There's not a breath of wind, as you can see behind me. Avon's like a mirror. And I've come out really just to see if I can catch something. <laughs> Bit of a two-pronged attack today. Uh, there's lots of roach in here, as we found out previously. Lots of everything, really. But I think really the targets, realistically, at the moment, I think the water temperature is going to be very cold. Perhaps three or two degrees, I'm guessing. Um, but I've got my thermometer. We'll do it in a minute. So, yeah, I've come out really thinking I'm going to have a go for roach on the waggler. And also we'll have a pike rod out as well. Um, just see if we can pick up a pike in here because there's plenty of pike in here being as how, the, how there's lots of prey fish in here what I've done is bought um, with me uh, a rod I got recently from uh, Angling Direct they've had a cracking sale on 25% off so I've uh, got myself this uh, it's an RVS specimen 12 foot 2 pound test curve that'll do me lovely for a bit of dead baiting um, don't really go in for hurling big baits a long way as you'll know if you follow the channel I don't do dead baiting too much but do like a bit on the canal and this will do my canal zander fishing and my pike fishing here as well as you can probably see I've got a what is this Esox piker five gram just a small one on here with a like an olivetti type thing sliding weight on the line there I'm gonna fish this float ledger this will be on the bottom and as you can probably see there if I Stick my thumb in the way. Don't go in for snap tackle. I do like circle hook. Sakuma 440 circle hook on some Drennan soft strand. Now I have made a um, video about how I tie up my traces if you want to give perhaps circle hooks a try. So I'll stick a link up there. You can go and have a look how I tie these up and what exactly I use. But yeah, very simple. This is just sliding up to a stop knot. Simple as that. We're going to drop it in the edge here. It's nice and still in the edge today. The haven's been up for so long. I'm thinking perhaps the pike might be a bit hungry but the edges here are very good I've had Xander here although I think it's too cold for Xander perch as well on dead baits I think that's probably out the window as well with the with the temperatures we had frosty nights all week so I think pretty realistically it's pike fishing now as far as the uh, roach fishing goes the waggler fishing I've got my cadence CR10 14 foot match number two uh, I'm gonna use a Drake waggler on there and I've got my uh, Abu Garcia 506 mark 2 close face reel right that's enough waffle isn't it should we do some fishing we'll get to uh, baits i've got with me i've brought some smelt with me and i'm hoping to catch some roach um perhaps use a roach as, as a dead bait as well so nice fresh bait uh could do a stock in the freezer up as well ready for the closed season so uh, we'll perhaps catch some roach and uh if they're the right size they'll go in the freezer unfortunately for them but obviously most of them will go back assuming we catch them that is of course it's very cold right i'm going to get temperature gauge in the water See how we get on, got maggots and bread as bait, a little bit of ground bait, that's it, simple as that. Right, let's get cracking. All right, we'll get a little bit of ground bait in, just on the edge of the flow, which is probably, I don't know, 15 meters, something like that, just over there. I'm not gonna fish too far out today, I don't think we need to. Just a couple of little balls of ground bait in. And then I'll start catapulting some maggots over the top. But again, I'm going to go very, very easy on this bait. It is cold. Having said that, I haven't got my thermometer in the water yet. Let's get this in and see just what we're up against. So I had to make a bit of a compromise on the landing net. I've bought my sort of medium sized landing net because we, we may well need it for both disciplines. But it's big enough, certainly to get anything reasonable in of a pike size. Uh, I can get that into the water here anyway. I can chin anything very large out without an issue. Right. A little sandwich bag with a few smelting. 
we'll get these in. Well, that's a nice surprise on the waterfront. It looks like it's just over 4. 4.2, 4.3, 4 4.4. So that's, that's a nice surprise. I did think it was going to be colder than that. Right, just going to split this mountain in half. Split him up the belly. I'll get him on. All I do, generally, is lip hook the fish with bait. Just literally. Size so 10 circle hook through the lips, which is about the toughest place. So you have to nick it, I nick it through both lips, and then got a nice lot of hook showing as well. Now, sliding float is set at Looks to me about nine foot here, which is probably about right. It's very deep in the edge here. I know from past experience. Now that should, if I'm over depth, it should lie flat. But as you can see, it's set at nine foot and it's gone under. <laughs> Let's try a little bit closer. Now ah, there we go, we're lying flat there. So we're, we're not far off depth. Right, what I'm going to do is stick, stick the bait runner on there as well because I have known pike and zander in here well and perch to be honest to absolutely tear off with that bait but it's nice, it's in my eye line there so I can, I can see that I do like using a float because you don't need all the gubbins, you don't need bank sticks, you don't need alarms, bobbins, you know, all that. Literally, just chuck that down, put it next to me there. And if I really am being a total idiot and I don't notice it go under, the bait runner's gonna start clicking. So it's it's much, much easier solution. I'm trying to keep my gear down to a minimum when I'm sort of doing two disciplines. Right, let's get this uh, float rod set up, the waggler rod, and we'll, we'll see how we get on. So I've set this waggler to around about 10 foot. That'll be somewhere near the bottom. May take a few minutes to just get things going. If we can, I'm gonna go on maggot first. I may go on bread punch if it's hard. I prefer to fish maggots just for the convenience really. But like I say, if it's hard, we can go on bread punch. What I'll do is I'll keep moving that float around, the pipe float that is. We'll keep moving that around. We'll give it, you know, 15, 20 minutes and we'll move it a little bit, move it a little bit, just see if we can drop it on the nose of a pike. Yeah, that's just lovely. Waggler's just running through there, nice. I'm just gonna put 10 maggots in, or five or 10 maggots every cast, just to try and get something going. can't get anything going there we can come back perhaps just a meter two meters at the most and we'll be in the slack water then and it may be that the fish are just resting up in there just shoulder up perhaps but yeah it's going to be fun water settled 4.4 <laughs> so I don't think they're going to be ravenous as I say sometimes it does take 15 or 20 minutes to get something going here. Can usually winkle a few fish out of here. No matter what the temperature. One size 20 uh, adrenaline red maggot. Hooked to nylon at the moment. I've got some 22s if you want to scale right down. Nothing first run through, noticeably it did run through as well with that tripping bottom, so. Come a little bit closer. I'm going to keep feeding maggots. Probably pinkies may be better today, but 
and said that my maggots are not particularly big because I've had them for weeks and weeks and weeks. They do keep well, but they, they sort of slowly shrink because they're not eating. So they're probably not much bigger than pinkies, to be honest. It's looking like it may be hard going today. Perked away. Blimey, it didn't take long, did it? <laughs> I just looked at it and then suddenly it's off. Well, <laughs> we've had a bite, but not quite what I was expecting. It's chugging off there, not doing a lot. The circle hook, so no striking either. Really not doing a lot at all. Look, she's going for three hours, gone under now. Not really an issue with deep hooking either with the circle hooks, debob circle hooks. Right now he's off, so we'll, uh, we'll wind down to him. There we go. Blimey, it's not very happy. <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> there you go, circle hook, look right in the corner of the mouth, exactly where it should be. Fab. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. <laughs> right, let's have a look at him. Give him a second, get his, uh, get his breath back. And we'll have a look at him. <laughs> well guys, there we are. Hope you can see that. Circle hook just nicked in the scissors there. There we come. Let's get hold of him properly. Him or her. <laughs> well, it's about that. <laughs> it's a good start, isn't it? Fantastic. <laughs> Great stuff. That was a bit of a surprise. Boy, is this fish cold. <laughs> right. Let's get it back in the water. Fab. <laughs> well, that worked a treat, didn't it? <laughs> Wonderful. Right, here's the back half of the smelt. <laughs> I like just splitting them down the middle, just let the juices out. A bit like a, like you sort of use, have a mackerel flapper, that kind of thing. <sighs> Cracking. Well, I have to say i pleasantly surprised. I thought we'd been catching a few roach, but not really any uh, pike, but it's completely the other way around. How weird. Right. Hopefully that means they're moving. So hopefully we might get another one. Let's drop one out there. Just a, I don't know, meter off the reed, something like that. It's just about depth that is. It's lovely. Bad. Right. <laughs> well, it's already been worth coming out. If we could catch a few uh, few roach as well, that'd be wonderful. Well, I haven't been monitoring the water temperature. It may be that it's taken a drop, and that's what's done it. Oh, we've had a bite. I think it's just dropped off. I had to bite and it's dropped off. <laughs> well, I was just about to say, up in the marina where I live, near where I live, just a bit further downstream, there's a... Uh, I've caught roach there under the ice. <laughs> Literally under the ice. So, um a bit surprised we can't get them going, but just had a bite, so perhaps we can 
Right, I'm going to really scale down. I'm going on it. <laughs> and get out of the bag. Size 22 to one and a half pound bottom. So see if that will uh, perhaps get us a bite. <laughs> That's not going to help either. The water temperature is now four degrees. So it's drop point four in the last hour. So uh, that's certainly not going to help either. I think we are up against it today. That's why I do generally in these conditions a favour going up the uh, up the tributaries and a bit of you know your bread flake to try and winkle out a chub. Try and drop a bait on the nose of a chub. They certainly find it hard to resist. No matter how cold it is, you can usually can usually tempt one with a bit of bread flake. Well, it's a maggot. It's a little dip on the float. Yeah. The risk of not being able to see it, I'm going to dip it, press it down a bit more. So, a bite and a suck maggot. Perhaps they're switching on a bit. Uh, I'll go in there. <laughs> but you never know if they do switch on. You know, the light levels are going to start dropping as well this time of the day. So if they do switch on, you know, we may we may yet have a few roach. So I did have a little dip on the float, but it was sticking up quite far out of the water, really. But it's not the easiest thing to see against this background. Light, dark, light, dark, light, dark as it trots past these trees. It's really tricky to see. Which is why I sort of got it sticking up like a lighthouse, but dotted it now and now as any perhaps about 10 mil showing. Fish, but we got a fish. God, I didn't even go under. Blimey, we finally, finally got a roach. Wow, blimey. Hard, hard going. Wow, perhaps it has taken an hour, an hour and a half, and going down to a size 22 to get him, to get him, uh, to take the bait. I knew they'd be here. Always oh, here. <laughs> well, I say maybe it took an hour to get a bite, and then another ten minutes to get another one, and then five minutes to get another one. It may just be that things are starting to turn. I'll tell you what, a very, very, very slight breeze picked up and it's bloody freezing. <laughs> oh, blimey. I mean, I ain't got a coat on, but I've absolutely got so many layers on and thermals and everything. So uh, it shouldn't really be cold. Well, I think we need to make this the last cast on the Waggler unless something happens, because uh, 10 or 15 minutes again without a bite, add those two or three bites, quick succession, and then nothing again. So, uh, flogging a dead horse, really, I think. What I'm going to do is have this run through, and uh, assuming nothing happens, I'm going to pack this rod away, and take it 
with my chair and bag stick and a few bits and pieces and we'll ditch that lot and we'll uh, we'll get the other pike rod and we'll do a bit of pike fishing and we'll move about have a little move along this just little short stretch here a little bit further along see if we can drop on the nose of a pike so i think pretty much what we did earlier see if we can't find another one or two pike that uh, that fancy a munch So guys, I'm back. Forgive me for thinking it was a different day. It's not, it's the same day. It is really cold. The, uh, it's about half three now. And the temperature is plummeting. Air temperature that is. But we'll have a little go for these pike. Just for an hour. Just see if we can't Winkle another one out. But yeah, I'm uh, gonna take that rod back to the car, the waggler rod. Grab this other rod, and uh, as you can see, grab my coat as well, because I could feel it was getting cold. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly the same setup as the other rod. Completely identical in every way that other rod we'll just we'll have a bit of a move about as you can probably see come a bit further along we'll just sort of put a couple of baits in here and then we'll leapfrog along I'm just gonna drop one over this side and over here We'll, uh, we'll give it 15 or 20 minutes in these spots. Give it perhaps 15 or 20 minutes, then we'll just, I'll take that rod and move it down that way and we'll just work our way along down here. I think 10 or 15 minutes is long enough. Let's see if we're gonna get a bite in each of these spots. Doesn't usually take long and there's a pike about. Hungry pike, that is. So, back where we started. <laughs> then all the way along there, but absolutely nothing doing at all. Nothing at all. Not a sniff. So, as I say, we're back where we started. It's starting to get dark now, we haven't got too much longer. We'll give it a few minutes. Perhaps 10 or 15 minutes in here. A bit shallow. Well, set a bit shallow, I should say. Yeah, well, I've got about 10 minutes, I think. Something like that. Maybe 15 at a push before the light goes. So we'll... Uh... We'll spend them in the swim we started in. These baits a bit of a stab. See if we change baits in the last five minutes. Ten minutes.
Well, guys, I think I'm going to call it a day at that. Just stood here watching these floats be completely motionless. There's nothing happening at all. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a strange old session, really. I was expecting to catch some roach, roach and possibly a pike, and we ended up catching a pike and one roach, bizarrely. That's very, very strange. I've never had a session down here like that before. I'm sure they're here. They're just, I think, probably just a bit cold to, to feed. There's actually ice in the, in the edge of the water. Um, it's that cold. I mean, I know I missed the temperature, but that was out there. Um, and it has dropped since I've been here as well, so... Who knows, but as you can see by how wrapped up I am, it's not very warm at all. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a move for home, I think. As there is absolutely nothing happening. I haven't even had a sniff. I the, the, float, the floats haven't bobbed, nothing at all. And we've covered a bit of water, as you've seen. Um, so, yeah. Probably uh, probably time to, to make a move for home. Now, I am going to get over the weekend. That's the plan at the moment, anyway. I do fancy doing a bit more trotting with the rivers looking like they are I mean the Avon here can probably about two or three foot of visibility I mean it's bang on for some trotting really so I'd like to get and do some trotting so I may do that over the weekend but uh, in the absence of one of these floats going down in the next 30 seconds I think it's uh, it's home time so uh, all there is left to do is say thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed that bit of a strange old session <laughs> tight lines enjoy your own angling if you get out in these freezing conditions Many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support and I'll, uh, I'll see you all again very soon.